whatever business you're in, it's going to require work. I, I don't think there's a substitute for work. That's something that's always going to be there. And if you can outwork everybody else, chances are you'll do better, right? But outworking, putting in those hours, putting in that time, it can get extremely draining and difficult mentally, physically. I mean, again, I talk about willpower depleting, but cognitive abilities, like your, your cognitive abilities of you actually thinking straight, talking, communicating, needing some water because your mouth is getting dry. Like the physical aspects of dealing with long days of work, of being in business, of dealing with people, your fitness is your business. And this is from a gentleman named Robin Sharma. I've talked about him before, probably I've dropped his name. So you guys can check him out. Uh, he's got some good things to teach, some good things to say, give or take, you know, like everybody else, including myself, take whatever's valuable, leave the rest. That's how it always should be. I don't care who it is including myself, including whatever. In my opinion, with anything and everything, you should take whatever is valuable and leave the rest. So take everything with a grain of salt. I don't care who it's coming from. So Robin Sharma has a lot of great, valuable stuff as well. One of the things that he always talks about is your fitness is your business. Hence why, not because of that, but also for me personally, why my first category of goals and goal setting is personal. It's mind and body. Because if I don't have that in check, there is no way, there is no way I could have been in sales all the, year, all the years I was in sales. There's no way I could have gone entire days just drinking coffee and surviving and being in so many deals. Like when I was in the dealership, honestly, at some point, my diet just became like three to four coffees a day. And then 9, 10 p.m. at the end of the night, I would have one meal. And it was, I wasn't healthy. Now I have better ways to do that. I do intermittent fasting and things like that now where it's conscious. But at that point, back in those days, I didn't have a conscious plan for it. But I just knew like it was the drive and, and the, the willpower and motivation that was really carrying me. It was extremely unhealthy, but that was really my diet. It was really like three, four, five coffees a day and just running, like running back and forth across the dealership. We had five floors. Our dealer dealership was five floors and all our uh, used vehicles were on the fifth floor. So I had to take the stairs, like literally grab the keys, go downstairs, grab the keys from one of the drawers, sprint. And by the way, full suit and dress shoes, sprint all the way up to the fifth floor, find the car, realize it's blocked by two other cars sprint back down five sets of stairs, right? Grab the other two cars. Sometimes the other two keys, sometimes the cars are out or the service department has them or the parts department has them run around to all these different departments, talk to the manager, find the guy, grab the keys, go back to the stairs, run up five flights of stairs again, move those cars, take the other one, bring it back. It really took a high level of fitness. So anyways, that was a very vivid example of the auto world, but it's the same thing in every single world, right? If you're working from home and you're an entrepreneur and you're on calls all day, the capability of speaking of the mental capacity when I'm on calls all day long with clients doing coaching calls, doing sales calls, doing all these different things. And I've talked to, I don't know, let's say 10 people a day, right? I'm not just talking to somebody regurgitating something. I'm really asking questions. I'm thinking, I'm figuring out how to help them. We're putting together strategies. Like mentally I'm deteriorated. Physically I'm sitting right here, but mentally, right? So anyways, long story short, your fitness is your business.